On the show today, we'll be celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Jackson Blazer. We welcome the uh, current publisher, Alan Wade, along with uh, two of the founding members of the team, Benita Wade Deer and Ben Wade. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us, Bart. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're uh, going to have a big celebration for 60 years of the Blazer coming up on March 18th. That's right. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, what's, what's planned for the event, Alan. Well, Bart, I think the highlight of the event will certainly be um, focusing on the origination of the Blazer and the publisher and the publishing staff that got us to where we are today, along with some uh, community members that have, you know, played a role that have supported the Blazer for six decades. But primarily, we, we just want to, you know, celebrate and thank Jackson for the support over the years. And, and it begins with Ben Wade and, um, and of course, uh, my sister here, Benita Wade Deer. Yes, uh, Ben and Benita are uh, Alan's brother and sister, uh, three of the five. Exactly. And Ben, you were the, the, the first. How, first how born. How, 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 the first to start <laughs> the, this, too. And the first editor. First born and first with the Blazer. How, how, what, what were you thinking? How did the Blazer come about? I was young and crazy. Um, actually, it was not my idea. It was Charles Cade, my business partner. Mm -hmm. He was a, what we call now a returning citizen. He had done some time in our institution for stealing his brother's car. And he was released to the Jackson community, paroled here. And during his stay at, at, uh, at the institution there, he'd worked with a prison newspaper. Hmm. And when he got out, he realized that the newspaper could bring him uh, not only uh, believability and, and, some, and some social influence, um, and he began inviting uh, others, community leaders around the city to help him to get a newspaper started. Well, those meetings lasted for probably a year or so to no avail. And um, I ended up moving next door to him. And he had Sunday afternoon little sessions. He played good jazz and had good food. And he invited me to stop by. And from that relationship, we struck up a friendship and he began to tell me of his dream of starting a newspaper. Wow, what was your, what was your uh, career path at that point? I was a student at Jackson Junior College ah. uh, with a business administration major, hopefully. Uh, well, it's only fitting that the celebration of the 60th anniversary be at Jackson College. Yes. Yes. Been some changes. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, Benita, you um, were the first uh, secretary, and uh, you set the type. You did. You were like the jack of all trades. Well, Bart, I was. Now, I wasn't the first, but I was the first in our family. But I wasn't the first. But I did. Um, I started working with my brother when I was 12. Hmm. And I was then a, a student at um, Hunt Junior High School. And um, incidentally, that was the very first year that the schools in Jackson were integrated. And I was at Hunt and I took typing as an elective class and one afternoon I was up at the blazer and like any 12 year old I was just trying to impress my brother mm -hmm. and I told him that I could type and um, mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and and so he said well let me see and what I didn't know Bart was that the young lady who was working the office then and setting the type that she was pregnant and she would be leaving. And so he was in fact looking for somebody to fill that position. And so when I said I could type, what I had in mind and what he had in mind were two totally different things. <laughs> he said, let me see what you can do. And so he, he gave me something to type. I sat down and I typed it. And again, I'm 12. 
I knew where the home row was, and I could probably type about 30 words a minute with a whole slew of mistakes. But when I got done, I looked up at him and smiled. He looked back at me and he said, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> and for seven years, I worked at the Blazer, and he taught me how to set type. He taught me how to lay out the newspaper. He was a, he was a very generous teacher. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to sell ads. He taught me how to uh, bill our advertisers. And I learned how to do all of that, working uh, 2 to 6 p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. On Friday, I was even the janitorial service. <laughs> learned how to do all of that. As I say, he was very generous. He, was, he wanted me to learn everything he knew that um, I needed to know. And it has been, I think, uh, all these years, it's been in addition to a labor of love, it has been a one, one or two man band for most of the time, yeah. in, including today. Absolutely, absolutely. Even you know, during Ben's time uh, uh, as, as publisher, he had several of us. Um, and he didn't look, he, he, he could look close to home <laughs> and, and get the help that he needed. Um, you know, I certainly worked for him for a number of years in different capacities from, no, I couldn't type. And, I, and he didn't trust me to, to, to lay out anything, <laughs> but, but he knew I could deliver. I was one of the first delivery boys, and ultimately I became a salesperson uh, prior to even becoming a publisher. Well, the publication is uh, so highly regarded in the community today, but I'm curious, what, what was the reception like in the early days? You mentioned <laughs> the, the integration of JPS about the time the, the Blazers started. So there, there was a lot of, a lot of race issues in, in this community. What, what was it like? Uh, how, what did people think of the Blazer? Initially, um, a lot of skepticism. Uh -huh. It'll never it, work, what are you yeah. thinking? Right, yeah. I talked to the mayor who was Bernie Majira at the time, who was trying to sell him an ad. He says, come back in two years, and if you're still in business, I'll buy an ad from you. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I had a meeting, just a discussion with Herb Spinlove. He was the editor of the Sit Pat at the time. And tongue in cheek, he, he, issued, he gave me his condolences. You know? So that was sort of the, the, the atmosphere mm -hmm. uh, from, the establish, from the white community. It's not gonna work, and if it does work, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of pain. So, so the white community ignored you? Not completely. Uh -huh. you, you know, this was a community with about 14% black, 12 to 14% black. Mm -hmm. And we depended on advertising. Because of integration, the business community in the black, in the black area, in the black community, the black business community, had declined greatly. Okay. What we had left was probably um, a mortician, some barber shops, and beauty shops. Mm -hmm. okay. A lot of black so owned businesses were your, your were, supporters. Were gone, yeah. And you, did you have people that were white business people that said, I, I don't want to advertise in a. Oh, yeah. there were a lot. But we had enough who were supportive, um, particularly Link, Vermeulen. Mm -hmm. Um, courtesy Ford, Al Naylor, there were several. Uh, well, the, there were businesses that recognized that uh, the black consumer had purchasing right, power and right. wanted to reach. Yeah. Our, sale, our sales selling point was that we are your margin of profit. Okay. So, hey, let us help you make money. And that's, that's really how we survived. Um, I guess it was in the 80s when uh, the downtown left and things began to really go down. Actually, I came downtown one day and there I saw tumbleweed blowing down Michigan Avenue. And we nearly went out of business. Um, we just got to be more creative to make things to, in order to survive. But there have been tough years, yeah. You know, fortunately, there was enough advertisers, you know, from mainstream to keep us going yeah. mm -hmm. uh, those years, combined with some national advertisers here and there. Right. Uh, some state advertisement and combined with the local. 
mm-hmm. establishment, uh, people like Beef Burn. Yeah. Beef Burn was one of the Blazers original that they're still on our uh, advertising roster today. Okay. And uh, I was looking through old Blazers and I saw Beef Burn in the 60s. Yeah. Beef Burn. I said, wow, that's one. amazing, you know, and, and Vermeulen's as well. Right. Yeah, so, but, um, you know, it came at a time, Ben and Bart, when integration, you know, it, it had one purpose, but it also served another, which meant the closing of black businesses. Right. right. Yeah, it was yeah. painful. Because African Americans had a choice. They could go to Holiday Inn right. when they were previously denied. Mm-hmm. And that hurt black businesses tremendously. Absolutely. I did notice uh, Alan's got every issue of the Blazer Bound. And looking at some of the issues uh, from the early 70s, there are advertisers then that are still with you Absolutely. today. Right. That's, yeah. that's, that's a long... Thank you, Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, that's a long, a long uh, record of support. But and that's just one year right there, Bart. That's, uh, uh, I think, the year 1975. Yeah, 75. Now, ben, does the, that ring a bell? I mean, Benita? Almost well. definitely. That is, that is our work. I set the type for, um, you for set the, the type? Adi- yes. I, I recognize all- it. You did a nice job. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you know, it was long before things like PageMaker or Microsoft Word. Oh, I know. We had to actually type every article, and then we used a, it produced a paper tape that you fed back into the machine, and then it would justify. So it was, it was quite different then. Did you, like, was it movable type? Did you have to take uh, pieces of lead and put no, it in a that- tray? That was during my time. <laughs> Your time. Yeah. yeah. When she came along, it was now, technology had changed. When you uh, first started, the, uh, the Citizen Patriot, uh, at the time, did, was it covering the black community? Was there a big hole that you yeah. saw that you had to fill with the blazer? Yeah, when we started, the, the black community had no positive coverage. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, you you got in, you got your name and picture in the Citizen Pat when there had been a crime committed, or basically that was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you were a prominent uh, leader in the community, you may have gotten your picture in the obituary section. Right. But uh, not everybody. No, not everybody. And you, uh, your um, story in today's uh, Blazer says your. Uh, your mission for the last 60 years has been uh, control the narrative. What do you mean by that, Alan? Uh, simply to piggyback on what Ben just said, um, to focus on the positive issues mm-hmm. that uh, occur in the African American community. Um, as, as you know, we can be in charge of what we say about each other. We can, we can tell the stories that matter, mm-hmm. the stories that motivate young African Americans to be uh, the next mayor, to be the next uh, governor, to be uh, a prominent doctor. So we want to control that narrative as opposed to um, who robbed, who raped, and who killed. And next uh, issue, uh, Alan came down and interviewed our family uh, last week and uh, you put us on the cover. <laughs> Andy's keeping track of how many times you put him on the cover. And I think it's up to four. Okay. I think you can stop now. Okay. <laughs> hey, you, you guys keep making headlines in the community. I think the last time you were over there making a huge contribution over at mm-hmm. Lily Baptist Church, giving away, you know, part of the, the community giveaway. So, hey, when you guys stop, I'll stop. All right. How's that? That sounds like a, a fair deal. Okay. So this is, uh, next month is the, uh, the an- anniversary issue, right? Yes, yes, yes. So this month. This actually this, this month. month. This month. Later this month. Right? Yeah, because yeah. the Blazers. Are... All right, I think we have a picture. Do we have a picture of it? This is uh, one of the pages celebrating 60 years. And notice at the top, me- member of the Michigan Minority Press Association. Uh, we looked, Alan. I remember we looked at a list of all the black uh, newspapers in in uh, the state of Michigan right. uh, a few years ago, and there were like 30 or 40, there were a lot of them. Right. And today... There may be, there's less than 20. Wow. Yes. 
So you've survived. So what's, what would you say, and you know, Ben, looking you know, back to the beginning, what would you say that was the, the, the key to having uh, this newspaper not only survive, but, but really have some great success for 60 years? Well, you know, the Blazer was, was the first black newspaper to join the Michigan Press Association. Uh, we, were, we were brought in by Bob and Bobby Mather from the Grass Lake News. And then it was the Blazer in conjunction with a couple of other publishers who formed the Michigan Black Publishers Association, which made a tremendous contribution to, to the survival rate of black newspapers right. because we could, buy, we could buy bulk, so to speak, and we had access to national advertising. So the Michigan Black Publishers Association is key to the survival of the black press. Really? Okay. Uh, a lot of good memories, a lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of funny stories that, that, uh, that go along with it. But I, th I think what, what made it possible for the Blazer to survive um, it's just determination, mm -hmm. you know. And Benita, when you look back, you know, when you were, you know, faking the typing uh, in those early years, uh, did you ever think that uh, we'd all be sitting here 60 years <laughs> later? <laughs> Bart, not, uh, I certainly didn't think that the Blazer um, would have survived, but I, but I don't know why not, because I know my family. Mm -hmm. And I know that once we put our mind to to you know, to doing something, uh, we tend to be pretty relentless. And I just have, you know, to really thank Alan because he has taken certainly Ben um, and and Mr. Cade. They had the creative genius to come up with the blazer, but he has Alan has taken that and transformed it. You know, the the motto of the blazer is your voice in the community, and the voice back then and the voice now is a little bit different. And Alan has done such a wonderful job of, of transforming the blazer and making it relevant so that it has withstood the test of time. Yeah, I would agree. It's a, very, it's a different uh, yeah. publication. And, and there, were some, uh, there were some rough times uh, for the blazer. Oh, yeah. We, you know, ben pretty much said it all in reference to the Michigan uh, Black Press Association and uh, the resources that we had to help us when, uh, say, local resources weren't available. Mm -hmm. you know, but Ben's being quite modest uh, about you know, his, his role in, 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 in the or, origin of the Blazer. Uh, you know, he's, he's a journalism student, and so the Blazer fell right into his niche. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that's, you know, it was part of his dream as well as Mr. Cage's, and that's why you know, it, it flourished like it did because he was kind of living his dream through the pages of the Blazer. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I don't think, you know, I actually thought the Blazer might die when Ben retired mm -hmm. because it certainly was not my dream. You know, um, I, I did not, it was not my first choice. <laughs> Even back in those days, it was a matter of, you know, supporting my brother and, and trying to have some income, but that was Ben's dream. So, uh, yeah, you can, you can, he, he's being modest in terms of, you know, his dream and how he felt about those early years, but as Benita said, right, because of his determination, you know, Mr. Mr. Cade had passed on relatively early from the conception of the Blazers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about many years later, at the Blazers still continued to thrive under his leadership, so, yeah. Um, and, and if I could, I believe, Ben, you left the Toledo Blade where you were working at the time because he wasn't even living in the Jackson mm -hmm. area. Right. But he relocated, quit his job, left the Toledo Blade, moved back to, to Jackson so that he could continue the work of the Blazer. Right. So when you say he's very modest about it, he really is. Right. I think you all are. And uh, you wouldn't know that this wasn't a labor of love uh, on your part because you put so much in, into it. But I do know that you you came back almost under the rest, take this, well, take this over and keep it going. Right, I had plenty of support and 
the, the skills that I lacked. You know, I could never fill his shoes as a publisher, and I really quit trying. I just focused on what I had to offer, and that is I love Jackson and I love my community. And hopefully that's what you can see in the pages of the Blazer because uh, that, that's the only thing I have really to offer. That's what we see, and here's to 60 more. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> we want uh, the whole community to join in the celebration of the 60th anniversary of the Blazer at Jackson College on Saturday, March 18th. Get your tickets. And I saw Larry Sumner the other day. He says he's very excited to be part yes, of this. Yes, Larry's going to be there. And your sister Babby's coming back. Yeah, so. Awesome. Well, congratulations and thanks for coming in today. Sure. Thank you, Thanks Brad. for having, thanks. having us. Yep. Thank you. Getting ready to celebrate 60 years of The Blazer, Ben Wade, Benita Wade Deer, and Alan Wade. Stay tuned. Up next on today's show, we'll preview the spring musical that Northwest High School is putting on. Matt Snell, the choir director, is joining me next. Stay with us. <laughs>